how you doing? Um, this is a very exciting episode because we found just an amazing amount of fish um, on this property in Kenilworth, which uh, one of my friends knows the the person who owns it. So we got to stay there over the weekend, um, and this was lovely. There were so many birds, uh, lots of rockatoos, and they then. Uh, this guy had these chickens, and as you can see, they are gorgeous chickens. Um, he grew uh, all of his own vegetables there, had a very nice property. And at the back of the property, there was this stream, which I presume flows when it's um, been raining a bit. But it hadn't been raining, so the pools of water in the stream were, weren't connected. They were just little pools a few meters across, and you know, maybe about a meter deep at most. Um, but it was really encouraging what we found in these pools. It, it was uh, it was an amount of fish that I, I was not expecting to find. You can see this pool. It just, from above, it doesn't look very impressive. It just looks like, you know, some some dried up pond. But no, it's, it's a river. And it will flow when there's enough rain. Um, and just when you go under the surface, it's just this amazing world. It's so clear, and there's all these little fish, and these fish are natives. Um, they're native Australian fish called blue eyes, and the males get this wonderful yellow, um, almost yellow, orange, and white pattern, kind of like a butterfly, and they have these gorgeous blue eyes. They're really striking. You can see a male there, um, just out of focus. Unfortunately, the camera um, will not focus on something as small as a blue eye, and blue eyes are very small. They may be two or three centimeters long, maximum. Um, but in this pool, there was hundreds of them, um, and I, I really hope it will rain again, and they can, you know, move along this stream. I hope this doesn't dry out, because there was a really healthy population in here, and one of the great things about blue eyes is they love to eat mosquitoes. So if there's mosquitoes in your area, they'll try to find water and they'll try to breed in the water and, you know, lay their eggs and their babies will grow in there. But if you have water with blue eyes in them, it's like a mosquito trap. So any mosquitoes coming and laying their eggs, um, they're going to be drawn to this pool and then the blue eyes are going to eat them all. So they're a really beneficial fish to have if you can find some. Um, and Kenilworth is near this river called the Mary River, and it has some of the most astonishing wildlife. It's got unique turtle species, it's got a unique species of cod, uh, it's full of, full of life if you can find the patches with life in it. A lot of it flows through properties, so we weren't able to access the majority of this river. We could only look at this tiny little tributary that, you know, branched off from, from the main river. And, you know, it wasn't flowing. The main river was. The main river had plenty of water in it, but not here. And, oh, just look at how clear it was. Uh, I was amazed, because looking at it from above, you could not tell how clear it was. And there's clearly enough food for these blue eyes, because there's a, there's a large number of them in here. And I saw blue eyes of different sizes. You know, there were little ones and big ones, males and females. And... You know, if, you look, if you're into aquascaping, which is making tanks look like rivers, this would be an ideal river to base your aquascape off. It just had everything. It had all these sticks and leaves and, you know, places for blue eyes to, to hide in. Um, and going under the water again from a different angle, it's just astonishing. I was just so blown away. I was not expecting to find any fish here. Um... The guy who owns the property, he he said there was some fish here, but he wasn't sure what they were. And just looking from above, I could tell these are blue eyes because they they had just have this amazing blue eye that you can tell from above. They kind of look like a, a a guppy, but they have this distinctive blue eye that makes them really stand out. And you know, if you can catch one, then you can see that they have this wonderful pattern on the males at least. The females don't have anywhere near as much of a pattern on them. But if you do catch some, make sure you put them back because, you know, they're a native fish and 
we want to try and keep as many native fish as we can in their habitats. Um, unless, of course, you know, if they're in a pool that's going to dry out, then, you know, I think it's okay to save them. Um, and maybe when the, the pool gets some more water in it, then you can return them. Um, and here I am walking along to the second pool in this creek. This one was a, a longer, and it went around a corner, and the guy who owns the property, he said that there was an eel living in here, and eels are amazing because um, their life cycle is their parents will go out to sea quite deep in the ocean to breed, and then the babies will swim up into fresh water hundreds and hundreds of kilometers, um, and, you know, to get to this stage, it would have taken this eel just so long. Um, they're really amazing. And here, we found a turtle. And I think this may have been one of the Mary River turtles. And that's really encouraging to see. He's clearly got a, a nice little home here. He's a nice size. I hope that there's another turtle in the area so that he can go and, you know, mate with him and have some baby turtles. Um, he was quite happy there. Just hiding, hiding under that, that uh, log. But there's obviously plenty of food for him with all these blue eyes. And he was so well camouflaged. Um, my friend just by chance saw him. Um, he just like slightly moved his head and my friend was like, Whoa, what's that? I said, you got to come over here and film this. And so I came over and I, I managed to capture the turtle on camera. Um, and it was a little bit murky up here because um, I think a dog had ran through it earlier. Um, but still lots of blue eyes swimming around. And yeah, we didn't actually get to see the eel, but it just, I, it amazes me how far eels can get up rivers. They can go for about two days without being in water, um, so they're, they're pretty resilient, and they can swim as fast backwards as they can forwards, which I think is amazing. Um, so yeah, we didn't get to get to see the eel, but it's encouraging to know that there's that my uh, the guy who owns the property has seen an eel in here, um, and he obviously isn't eating all the blue eyes, but I imagine he'd eat some of them. But you know, there's a healthy population of them, so so that's okay as long as he doesn't overdo it. But just the amount of these blue eyes is. It's really encouraging to see, and they all looked healthy. I didn't see any signs of disease on them. Um, they were quite isolated here, but as I said, when it rains, they'll be able to mix with other groups and, you know, get some genetic diversity going on so they won't, they won't be troubled by, you know, too many hereditary diseases. And they weren't afraid of the camera. They weren't afraid of us. They were quite happy to swim right up to it, as you can see. I just wish I'd have got them in focus. It was really hard to film these fish um, because my camera is a fixed focus camera, so I couldn't manually adjust to, you know, get them in focus, and they were just too small. Um, I'll, I'll try and find a picture of them to show you what they look like when they, they are in focus. But just just a fantastic environment here. Really lovely logs and sticks. And we'll go and have another look at that turtle. You can see he's so well camouflaged, you can barely see him there. Hopefully he'll move his head. You can just see his head if you look really carefully. Um, but that's a great spot for him. And here, th this is where the eel was. It was a little bit further up. I think he was hiding underneath one of the logs, or, you know, he might have had a a burrow that he'd made into the the soft the soft riverbed. It was kind of like a soft, muddy clay, uh, perfect for an eel to make a home in. Now we go underwater again and get to see this other pool of blue eyes, which was separated from the first pool. And you can see there's just so many of them. But we didn't see any shrimp, um, so these blue eyes must be living off, you know, insects that are landing on the water, mosquitoes. Um, they're great at keeping pests under control. I'd like to see some shrimp in there, but uh, we didn't see any shrimp. 
And aside from the blue eyes, we didn't see any other fish. Um, we saw some species of frog, which I'll get to later. But, you know, the the blue eyes, they'd, they'd really made made this habitat their home. They were doing really well here. Just lovely big rocks. Really nice environment. I'm going to try and make... I have some fish tanks myself, and I'm going to try and make them look as good as this river did, because this was just a perfect environment, in my, my opinion. And it was so still, but so clear, and... Uh, from looking above, you just saw these leaves floating on it, and you thought, oh, this isn't going to be very good. But looking at this footage from under the water, I was just blown away by how good it actually was. And the birds, you could just hear birds constantly singing, and up a little bit further they were... There was a spot where they'd frequent, they'd go in to wash themselves. It was so picturesque. I'd, I'd really like to live somewhere like this. And one day I will. Just such a lovely environment. You can see me just taking in the awe of this place. Unfortunately, there was water on the land, so that's why it's a bit blurry. I didn't notice it at the time. And have a second look in this pool. L lovely school of blue eyes there. They're a very tolerant fish as well. I've seen them in brackish water, so where it's kind of salty. Um, I've seen them doing very well there. I've seen them in totally fresh water like here, doing just as well. But, you know, they're becoming rarer and rarer to find. I, I haven't seen blue eyes for years. The last time I saw them would have been about 10 years ago in a stream, in a brackish stream, quite far away. Nowhere near this one. Um, but it was really encouraging to see these ones. I think the, the isolation really, really helped them in this, this respect, because there was no other fish that could get in here. And uh, Kenilworth is a, a really lovely area. If you ever ever want to drive out from Brisbane and, and look at it, explore a cool little town with lots of rivers going through it and lots of birds, I'd recommend going to Kenilworth. And this area, this was where the birds were going. Um, I couldn't really capture them on camera, but they were flying down right into the water and hanging out on that branch just above the water. You could hear them beeping away while I was looking in the water. And this stream, this was looking really cool. It was so clear. Oh, it's just so perfect. Really inspiring if you if you like aquascaping. And lots of pretty blue eyes. I assume this water would be here most of the year because this population just wouldn't survive if it wasn't. And it hadn't rained for a, a few weeks here, so hopefully it'll rain and fill up this creek quite soon and they'll, you know, it'll keep raining and, and keep this pool alive. 
Um, but I th- I think the guy who owns the property, he would look after these and make sure that there was enough water in here if it did get really low. Just all these lovely little spots for them to hide in. And we didn't see any mosquitoes. So, they're obviously doing their job. Any mosquitoes breeding in here would quickly get eaten. They're much better at keeping mosquitoes down than any commercial bug zapper you could buy. It'll attract them, and then they'll go in and you can feed your fish. You just need a a pond with a lot of blue eyes in it, and they'll keep your mosquitoes under control. Have one final look in this creek. There's just so many. I was so excited when I saw them. Instinctively, I knew when I first saw them, I was like, oh my god, there's some blue eyes in here, I've got to film these. Lots of lovely native trees around, and ferns. Just a perfect area. And that was that was the adventure today. I, I hope you enjoyed seeing these blue eyes and um I'll I'll upload some more videos soon. I I I hope you um yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.